Uh, so TEDx recently turned five, his fifth birthday, uh, and we're close approaching the 10,000th TEDx event that's taken place all over the world. Uh, now these events range from 2,000 plus mega TEDx events that pack out the Sydney Opera House or the House of Parliament in London, all the way to events that are small with no screen in the slums of Kibera. And TEDx events are more than events. You know, I think that organizers, and speaking as a TEDx organizer, I think we do this to facilitate conversations. You know, to facilitate uh, interactions, meaningful interactions with people who we might not otherwise talk with. To understand what ideas fuel a person and why. You know, TEDx, in my opinion, is a means to facilitate action from ideas worth spreading. And one component of TEDx, an action, if you will, that often goes unnoticed is music. Now, we've heard two extraordinary music performances here in just the first session of TEDx HGSE. This is true of most TEDx events. They almost all have live music. And this means that there are literally thousands of cities all over the world where TEDx organizers are bringing artists to the stage to represent ideas worth spreading in a musical context. So I, along with a few TEDx organizers from uh, India, Brazil, the Netherlands, have put together an initiative that aims to share the best live music from TEDx events with the world. It's called the TEDx Music Project. We currently have over 300 tracks, and this number is rapidly growing. And they're extraordinarily diverse. Also, just like the talks that you see on TED.com, the musical performances at TEDx events are licensed Creative Commons. This is extremely important because it means that anyone anywhere with an internet connection can access the entire catalog of music for free. You can not just access it, you can download it, you can remix it, you can share it. It's all available right now on SoundCloud. And the music is as diverse as the ideas that you hear at TED. Well, for example, uh, at TEDx Flanders, an event in Belgium, Box performed. Box, that's Baroque Orchestra X. They are a, a menagerie of rock ballad artists who create music with instruments from the Baroque area, of course. Uh, or at TEDx Sydney, a famous tabla player named Bobby Singh took the stage with a quartet. They're called Foreplay and they made an unprecedented collaboration that really defies convention. Or take Xuan Lu from TEDx Taipei. This uh, DJ pairs up with Erhu players. Uh, Erhu is a stringed instrument from Asia that's played with a bow. And he got with a theremin and a mix station and he created dubstep music that we, knew, we don't even really know how to classify. You know, and these are a snowflake on the tip of the iceberg. We have masters of loop station. We have novel collaborations. We have uh, modern classical. All of these performances, you know, they're curated from well over 150 countries. And it actually presents quite a challenge, which is how to navigate it. You know, would you think to look for music in the theme of you know, Algerian jazz? How about Fado? I was honestly before this project, I didn't even know what Fado was. Um, it's a traditional Portuguese type of music that uh, used to convey some of the challenges of living life uh, as a poor person in, in Portugal. Um, but this is a limitation that we, as organizers of the TEDx Music Project, are working to get past. So we're working on several different visualization mechanisms of, of the music. Uh, first of all, we're putting it on a Google Maps API so that you'll be able to say, look at Japan or Tokyo and see music that has been performed at TEDx events in any region of the world. We're running the performances through the EchoNest API, which will allow us to algorithmically generate playlists uh, based on attributes like danceability. Um, and this also will allow us to pull extra metadata so that we can expand the availability of the collection from just SoundCloud to other platforms like Spotify and Pandora. Um, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow called music a universal language. And I, I think he was correct in that. However, there's one challenge. In this exponential innovation age of music, 
Most of us have a very small vocabulary. There's so much music that's happening all over the world. And we hope that the TEDx Music Project will be a place where people can discover and learn how to burst that filter bubble of what we know music to be. So I would like to end by showing you guys a short video. Um, you'll recognize one of the performers in this. The, the music soundtrack that it's set to uh, is Athira, and she's, coming, she's playing at a TEDx NIT Calicut in India. Um, and before I play the video, I also want to say that we put together a special playlist for TEDx HGSE. Um, so you can go to the TEDxMusicProject.com and listen to that. It highlights some of the best, most novel music from the project. So thank you. <laughs>